So participants, this is Priya here and we'll start with a new topic that is automation testing using the UFT. So under this session, we are discussing the different topics like basics of automation testing. Then introduction to the UFT tool. And after that, we'll see how to do the record of the script, run the script and then check the results. And then we'll understand what is an object, the class, properties of the object, objects by object repository, Then we'll do the script analysis. And after that, we'll start with actions, parameterization, checkpoints, then how to create the function library how to use the recovery scenario manager and then visual basic scripting language and under the visual basic scripting language Again, we have the different topics and different programs that we will discuss. So participants, these are the different topics that we will cover under the automation testing using the UFT. So first of all, we'll discuss the basics of the automation testing. As you know, participants, every software that is developed, it should be tested for the quality. Each and every functionality has to be tested over here. And what exactly is testing? Testing is all about identifying the defects in the software. And verify the compliance of the software. with the client requirements. So this is what we mean by testing. All right, this is what we mean by testing. Now there are two different ways of testing. Testing either can be done manually or it can be done automatically using the software. Testing can be done manually or it can be done automatically using the software. So I guess all of you remember the manual testing steps. All of you remember the different steps of the manual testing. We start with the test requirement gathering. Then we have the test plan and analysis. Test design test implementation and execution defect reporting and tracking then we have the test closure so these are the different steps that we have already discussed in very much detail during the manual testing. Now tell me one thing, 
Is it possible to automate all these testing activities? Can I have a testing tool which can automatically go and gather the requirements for you? Can there be a testing tool that can write the test plan and then the test case documents for you? Can there be a tool that will automatically report the defects to the developer? Practically not possible. So when we say automation testing, it doesn't mean that all the steps can be automated here. So what exactly can be automated? Only the execution process will be automated here. Only on this one, we are automating the steps. So in the future, if you hear that the automation testing is being done in the project, then you need to understand that it is not that all the activities can be done automatically, but it's only the test execution that is getting automated over here. It's only the test execution process that is getting automated here. So what is the definition of the automation testing? What is the meaning or the definition of the automation testing? It is to test the software by performing different steps and comparing the expected and actual results automatically using the software we call it as an automation testing so here as a QA you'll have to perform all these steps automatically using the software so this is called as automation testing now the next thing is why should we go for the automation why the testing has to be automated what are the benefits of the automation testing First of all, it is much faster when compared to your manual testing. It's more reliable because there are no human errors that will get involved here. It is repeatable. You can do the objective assessment. Of the software, it's reusable. then cost effective reusable and cost effective so i will demonstrate this one and you will see that automation testing is much more faster than the manual testing it is more reliable because as a human you might do some kind of errors maybe due to the negligence or the complexity of the software And also, it's going to be a very tiresome job for a tester to test the same functionality with the different steps and different combination of the data. And also like this, you have to test the entire software. So it's, it could be quite tiresome activity for the testers. And that is why automation testing is much more reliable than the manual testers. The steps are repeatable. For example, I want to test the login functionality. What are the steps here? I enter the ID, I enter the password and then click on the sign in button. So these are the steps. Alright, these are the steps of the login. So now we test the same functionality with the different combinations of the data. For example, valid user ID, valid password, invalid username, invalid password, valid username, invalid password and so on. So do you see we are testing with the different data values here. But then these steps will remain the same. Steps will not change but then the data values will be changing. 
and that is why we go for the automation testing wherein we have the script that is written for the test and then the data table can be changed based on the testing that we want to do. So this is repeatable. You write the script once and then the same script can be used to test the functionality with the different combinations of the data. So it is repeatable. Objective assessment. Assessment is done without any bias. Now as a human tester, you might do some kind of errors while doing the testing. Maybe you have not executed the steps properly. Maybe you have not entered the data properly. All right. So there could be various reasons for which you could mark it as a defect. But then if we are following this kind of automation, it does an objective assessment. It doesn't accuse any of the developers, first of all. So we call this as an objective assessment. Means without bias, the testing is done. Reusable. So we have the reusability here. For example, I have recorded the script in the functional testing. And then the same script can be used for the different types of testing like retesting, regression testing, same script can be used. So once you create and then store the script and then it can be run any number of times that you want. And it is cost effective because we need not hire too many testers, especially the manual testers. Instead of hiring some 10 manual testers, we could hire two or three automation testers and get the task done. So these are certain benefits of the automation testing. I'll wait for a minute. If you want, you can quickly go through this one. So these are the benefits of the automation testing. But there are limitations also. First of all is the cost. So we should not ignore the cost that is involved in the initial setup of the software. Means initial setup of the testing tool, the licenses have to be purchased and uh, we need to train our testers to use the testing tools. So there are different kind of costs that are involved over here to purchase the tool. So for the initial purchase of the license, we need to pay and also we need to train our testers to use the tools. Then the additional effort involved should not be ignored. For example, the scripts or the result. So these are called as test assets. These are called as test assets. The different documents that are created or that are, that are generated for the testing process, we call them as test assets. And here when we are writing the script, the script have to be stored in a proper manner. The results that are getting generated should be stored. So this will involve the additional effort. Then people can set an unrealistic expectations. They can start expecting more from the testing tool than what it can really do. You should never underestimate a manual tester because the manual tester tests based on his intelligence, right? But then the testing tools have no intelligence at all. The way you configure, they are going to work. And if they are not configured properly, then again, it can lead to the problems while doing the testing. So you cannot set an unrealistic expectation with the software testing tool. They are not intelligent enough. Then the version controlling of the test assets that are getting generated. We are testing the different versions of the software for which we create the documents and also we are able to generate the results. So all this kind of documentation which we call it as assets, the version controlling have to be done. And then relationship and interoperability with the other testing tools. Because you know, right, whenever you're doing the testing, the software testing tools will be installed on the test environment. 
it's a separate system on which we do the testing the relationship and then interoperability so it should be compatible with the other testing tools and also the software then there are possibilities the risk that is involved with these vendors so sometimes these vendors can go out of service out of business or they might not provide the reliable services for or the support while we do the testing the tool can get outdated the licenses can be upgraded to the paid version so there are a lot of limitations also that are associated with this automation testing then the next part is tool selection criteria tool selection criteria means it is to select the tool based on certain scenarios so let's see what are the different scenarios that we have to consider while using the testing tool so first of all we have to check whether it is meeting our requirements are met or not then we have to check the readiness of the organization readiness of the organization to accept this kind of high end tools so if they are not able to make the complete use of the automation testing tool then there is no purpose in purchasing the license again the vendor here from whom we are purchasing the testing tools identifying the training needs and then training the employees and it should be compatible with the test environment in which we are going to test and then it should be within the budget the cost of the testing tool should be within the budget so these are the different criteria that we follow while we make the selection of the tool and then who is making this tool selection criteria it is made by the test manager test manager will decide the tool selection criteria so let me repeat this part once more whenever we select the tool we should make sure that we are meeting the requirements of the software that is being tested readiness of the organization to accept the new testing tools and then it should be compatible with the system on which we are testing and then the cost should be within the budget so the test manager decides on the tool selection criteria so you can go through this quickly and we'll proceed further and we have different examples of the test man uh, test automation tools here or automation testing tool for example hp qtp or the uft is a tool that we are going to use apart from that we also have wind runner uft the older versions 
web services testing the web services so these are the different tools that we have examples all right these are the different examples so we will choose a uft for our learning we will choose a uft for our learning because it's much more reliable when compared to the others and also it is more widely used tool then let's understand regarding the version controlling so for the version control sorry the different versions of the automation testing tool initially it was called as win runner so we have a tool called as win runner then which is less than 8 so all the versions less than 8 they were called as win runner and after that we started calling it as qtp we started calling it as hp qtp from the version 8 to 11 it's a qtp and then the newest version that we have is uft 11.5 years of experience so these are the different versions here these are the different versions participants sorry i'll just write it here okay the version 11.5 onwards we call it as the latest version of the uft then we have two types of licenses here we have two types of licenses one is the seat license and then another is concurrent license so the seat license is used by an individual if you want the license for only single tester you can go for seat license but if there are team of members who are going to use the software you can go for the concurrent license now more about uft more about uft uft is specifically used to test the functionalities or the functional requirements of the client the programming language that is used here it's called as vb the visual basic scripting language and then it can do the cross browser testing as well it can test the gui and api so more features about the uft we'll have a look at it now So here is an official website of HP company wherein you can find all the details about the UFT. You can find all the details about the UFT. So do you see we have the key features? 
and then unified functional testing screenshots and these are some of the key functionalities so first of all participants it is used for the cross browser and then the multi platform it's a cross browser and then the multi platform tool the same software can be used for the testing purposes over here on the different platforms or the browsers then optimized distributed testing so here you see we are able to do the test execution of the multiple tests simultaneously at a time we can test many of the many of the test multiple tests can be done simultaneously then multiple testing solution so here the testing can be done on the different devices for example the testing can be done on the um the phones smartphones and then the ipads the computers so we can do the multi testing means testing on the different devices then the next one image based object recognition so usually this was done by the testers because you have to see and then verify but here now it is done in the newer version of the uft newer versions of the uft then we have the visual test flows here so both the api and the gui tests are clearly displayed over here so do you see this kind of diagrammatic formats you can see and you will understand what are the different testing um files that have got included here so do, these are the different functionalities that will be present in the automation testing tool that is uft you can go through this quickly and then we'll proceed further so participants this is what we had to discuss under the basics so now we have discussed the basics of the automation testing and also i have introduced the uft tool for you so this is what we had to discuss in today's session and in the next session we will see the record run and then how to check the results all right so this is what we had to discuss for today